one of uh, Napoleon's generals, the other Napoleon, <laughs> came to him one day and they were fixing to attack the next morning. And this general says, sir, the conditions, the circumstances are not just right for the attack tomorrow. And Napoleon says, circumstances not right? Hell, I make circumstances. Attack. And I have never seen a successful man yet in any business that didn't say, when somebody says it can't be done, he says, attack. Attack. Start where you are. And when you get around to that curve in the road, although you can't see by it until you get there, you'll always find that the road goes on around. Attack. Don't procrastinate. Don't stand still. Attack. And uh, definite is the purpose inspires confidence in one's integrity and character, and it attracts the favorable attention of other people. Have you ever thought about that? I think the whole world loves to see a person walking with his chest sticking out, walking with an atmosphere that tells the whole doggone world that he knows what he's doing and he's right on the way doing it. Why, do you know people will get out of the way on the sidewalk and let you go by if you are determined to get by? And you don't have to whistle at them either or holler at them or anything of that kind. You just have to send your thoughts ahead with determination that you're going through that crowd. And believe me, they stand aside and let you go through and the world's like that. The man who knows where he is going and is determined to get there will always find willing helpers to cooperate with him. Now, there's another very important thing. And the greatest of, of all its benefits, that is, go, definiteness of purpose, it opens the way for the full exercise of that state of mind known as faith. By making the mind positive and freeing the mind from the limitations of fear and doubt and discouragement, and indecision and procrastination. The very minute that you decide upon something, you know that's what you want, you know you're going to do it, all of these negatives that have been bothering you, they pick up their baggage and get out. They just move out. They can't live in a positive mind. Can you imagine a negative frame of mind and a positive frame of mind occupying the same space at the same time? Could you imagine that? No, you can't, because it can't be done. And did you know that the slightest bit of a, a negative mental attitude is sufficient to destroy the power of prayer? Did you know that the slightest bit of a, of a negative mental attitude is sufficient to destroy your plan, whatever it is you're doing, carrying out your definiteness of purpose? You have to move with courage, with faith, with determination in connection with carrying out your definiteness of purpose. And next, definiteness of purpose makes one success conscious. You know what I mean by success conscious? If I said uh, it makes one also health conscious, would you know what I meant by that? What do I mean? Why, your thoughts are predominantly about health. And uh, with reference to success consciousness, your thoughts are predominantly about success, the can-do part of life, and not the no-can-do. Did you know that that 98% of the people who never get anywhere in, the, in life that we were talking about a while ago are no-can-do people? Any circumstance that you place before them or that is placed before them or that overtakes them, immediately they fasten their attention upon the no-can-do part, the negative part. I'll never forget, as long as I live, what happened to me when Mr. Carnegie surprised me and gave me a, a chance to organize this philosophy. I tried every way in the world to give him all the reasons I could think of and had about six, about six reasons why I couldn't do it. I didn't have sufficient education. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the influence. I didn't know what the word philosophy meant. Well... And there was about two others that immediately popped into my mind. And I was trying to get my mouth open to tell Mr. Carnegie that I thanked him for the compliment he'd paid me. But what was going on in my mind was that uh, I was doubting that Mr. Carnegie was such a good judge of human nature as he had been reported to be when he was picking me to do a job like that. <laughs> now, that's what went on in my mind. But there were silent persons standing looking over my shoulder. And he said, go ahead and tell him you can do it. Spit it out. And I said, yes, Mr. Carnegie, I'll accept the commission, and you can depend upon it, sir, that I will complete it. 
He reached over and grabbed me by the hand. He said, I not only like what you said, but I like the way you said it. That's what I was waiting for. He saw that I, my mind was on fire with a belief that I could do it. Even though I hadn't the slightest asset to give me a beginning other than my determination that I would get the assets necessary to create this philosophy. And if I had wavered in the slightest, if I had said to Mr. Carnegie, well, yes, uh, Mr. Carnegie, I'll uh, do my best. I'm sure, I never asked him about this, but I am sure that he would have taken the opportunity away from me instantly. Because it would have indicated that I wasn't too determined to do it. Yes, Mr. Carnegie, you can depend upon me, sir, to complete it. And your living witnesses here, although Mr. Carnegie has long since been gone, your living witnesses that Mr. Carnegie didn't pick wrongly. <laughs> he knew what he was about. He had found something in the human mind, in my mind, that he'd been searching for for years. He found it. I didn't know its value, but I found out the value of it later. And I want you to recognize the value of it, because you have that same thing in your mind. That same capacity to know what you want and to be determined that you'll get it even though you don't know where to make the first start. 